Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to talk about VisionWorks uh, library. It's a CUDA accelerated computer vision library uh, developed by NVIDIA. It is uh, OpenVX 1.0.1 uh, compliant. It's conformant. Uh, so what is VisionWorks? VisionWorks is a CUDA accelerated library. It implements all of the OpenVX primitives. And in addition, it has NVIDIA extensions and uh, also algorithms that build on top of uh, these primitives. Basically, we have um, all the primitives implemented with OpenVX uh, definition. And then we have implemented algorithms using these uh, graph API and framework API. Uh, VisionWorks is a flexible framework. Basically, we, we can seamlessly add user-defined primitives, uh, user-defined nodes. And it interoperates inter with OpenCV. So we have some interoperability API that shows how to use OpenCV with OpenVX. Uh, VisionWorks is a thread-safe API. Uh, it was uh, basically, uh, we have started with the implementation and then we made it thread-safe uh, so that we can uh, write actual embedded applications on top of this API. And it comes with documentation, tutorials, sample software pipelines that teach use of primitives and fr framework. So the platforms that we support today are, uh, there are some automotive platforms like DragPX, uh, Jetson TK1 Pro, uh, Jetson TX1, and TK1 on embedded side, and also we support uh, desktop. Any CUDA capable uh, platform uh, is supported uh, with VisionWorks. So what does this software stack look like? So everything builds on top of CUDA. So we leverage GPU architecture for acceleration of the OpenVX API. So we have uh, Kronos defined OpenVX framework and primitives. We implemented it and then extend it with additional types, functions, and modes. And we also provide direct access to the kernels that are, imp that are used in the implementation of the um, OpenVX API. Um, on top of it, we have source samples. These are practically graph API. Uh, they leverage graph API, and they show you how to use these building blocks, OpenVX building blocks together in source code samples so you can uh, install your package and start looking at like how you can do your graph implementation. And to support the uh, support VisionWorks on the platforms, we have an MVX multimedia abstraction layer. That's basically simple multimedia abstraction for your accessing the camera, CSI camera on the embedded platforms, or video decode, uh, giving access to your hardware uh, decoder, video encoder, and so on. And also rendering uh, APIs. Uh, at the top, we have some algorithms which are uh, relatively more complicated, like structure from motion, object tracker, again, uh, implemented with OpenVX Graph API. So if we are, uh, basically VisionWorks implements um, all of OpenVX primitives, and we have NVIDIA extensions. If you look at this table, what we did is categorize all the functions that of OpenVX uh, defines, and um, and then we extended some of them based on the customer feedback and some of the demos and applications, applications we had been working on. Um, so all the functions that you see in uh, green font are NVIDIA extensions. They are defined by, based on the demands of the customers as well as our own applications. And also the ones with the plus sign, they are defined by OpenVNX, OpenVX Kronos uh, standard, but we have additional modes or additional data types supported, like different color channels or um, uh, different bit width for the image uh, data structures, and sometimes uh, a different mode that are that's added. So, if you look at here, we have our main ex uh, extensions happen in optical flow and uh, dense optical flow and stereo uh, fields. In addition, we have some additions of features. Uh, like Fast Track, Harris Track. This is NVIDIA variant of uh, Fast Features and Harris Features. Uh, the main difference is instead of uh, finding prominent features on the image, we are looking at the cells, like uh, split the image into grid, and then find the prominent features all around so you can uh, generate like uh, uniform depth map and other uh, use these features in your algorithms. Um, and then we have basically uh, different modes added in these um, primitives. So if you look at our implementation, everything is good optimized except 
medium flow and fine tomography. These are NVIDIA extensions. Um, and 85% of VisionWorks OpenVX API, we also optimize with Neon. So you have basically both GPU acceleration as well as Neon. And then by setting which target hardware it's going to run on, you can run on either platform. So you can run it on the CPU with Neon optimization, or you can run it on the GPU. And then it will seamlessly transfer the data and then control it for you. Um, so you can look at basically our, go into our, our documentation, VisionWorks API, extension API, and then look at the table, which, and then identify which ones are accelerated on what platform, and then you can construct your pipelines accordingly. Um, if we are to look at primitive acceleration in VisionWorks, uh, we have seen up to 92x speed up compared to OpenCV CPU implementation. Uh, on Drive PX platform, this is the uh, Tegra X1 based uh, platform, automotive platform. On average, it's an 8x. This is, a, this is measured with a benchmark of uh, 400 primitives. All the kernels run at different sizes, different parameter settings. It's a kind of average, of average uh, speed up. And we see about 13x speed up, up to 13x speed up compared to OpenCV CUDA kernels. On average, it's about 2x on DrivePX. Um, on, if you have, let's say, more capable um, CUDA desktop GPU, then you see more significant speed ups on, for these primitives. So, right. what does it look like? So we have, with VisionWorks, we have three levels of API. Um, first one is OpenVX immediate mode. So we have a sample video uh, that we implemented uh, a while ago using OpenCV CUDA. And what we have done is we took this implementation and then ported to uh, VisionWorks uh, immediate, uh, OpenVX immediate mode. So th this particular stabilization sample is like very simple. Uh, you do color conversion, uh, feature detection, construct the image pyramid, uh, do optical float, you process, you do some processing of these points and then find the homography and then you warp and hence you have a stabilized image, stabilized video. This is a very simple video stabilization example, more, at, I mean, on your cell phone or let's say cameras, of course, it's much more advanced. It um, combines AM, IMU data and other sensors, but this is a very simple pipeline. And what we have seen is when we, uh, took this OpenCV CUDA implementation and accelerated with our OpenVX implementation. Um, we have seen like 40% uh, improvement on feature detection, 70% on image pyramid, uh, almost 5x on optical flow. Actually, we spend a lot of time because this is one of the most critical uh, primitives that's used everywhere. So uh, we put a lot of emphasis on that. And then 2.3x on uh, homography and process points and for warp perspective of almost 5x. Um, color conversion, it seems a degradation that needs to be checked, but probably it's a very small kernel, uh, negligible. Yeah. So given that your OpenVX uh, API is layered on top of CUDA, and you're comparing to CUDA here, I'm assuming, right. where, is the, where is the advantage coming from? Is it mm. because yes. of the API? Is it because you, it allows you to do optimization Yes, that, that's a very good question. Uh, basically, uh, the benefit of uh, OpenVX graph, uh, ape, um, graph primitives is, firstly, we are focusing uh, strictly on the performance. So we do not basically we tune our uh, primitives for performance. That's one. It's not as generic as OpenCV. It's like basically um, uh, we are not trying to be a generic library. It's well defined by the API and hence we just implement it. So all the overhead that OpenCV has like uh, at the API level has been eliminated with the uh, OpenVX definitions. So for example, we do not have um, uh, memory allocation, uh, it's very lightweight and strictly optimized for the data size and data types are very well defined and we stri strictly optimize for that. So yeah. question, does data get copied from security <coughs> Everything is done in the GPU. So in this case, um, um, so there is um, this is everything is GPU except in here process point and find homography. There is a, a small CPU section there, uh, but the rest of it is on the GPU. So the 
the data is it read by the GPU directly into GPU memory? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the OpenCV image source goes directly to GPU. Yes. Memory. Yes. 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 In this particular case, we cut it at the GPU level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you are a hardcore CUDA programmer, <coughs> can you can you explain me how you get a traffic speed up in, in, in one case by, by using another programming model or another abstraction? So if you're like, for example, particularly optical flow or like any other algorithm, how we can get 5x? Yeah. Okay. So um, one advantage here is that, of course, we are very close to the uh, hardware. So we know all the features that it has um, and how the cache behaves. So there is some advantage on our side that we, we know the specific architecture features. Well, why couldn't you apply, why couldn't you apply the same Optimization underneath the OpenCV API. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I think the yeah. audience is saying that I'm, I'm writing in C and I'm getting better performance than what anybody could ever do in assembly. And it's like yes. the C compiles <laughs> to assembly, so how are you doing oh, this? Oh, this is that, not. That's kind of the question that people are asking. Okay. Um, I haven't perceived that question in that way because I don't see it's like C versus assembly kind of comparison. Well, uh, I mean, from the perspective that mm -hmm. the OpenVX is ev eventually implemented in CUDA is what people are asking. Correct. So how come, how come the direct CUDA implementation is slower than the OpenVX implementation? That All right. Okay. To CUDA? Okay. Good question. If you, yeah. Uh, so. In the end, you can see it as both of them are direct implementation of on CUDA, right? Uh, so um, the uh, if you look at OpenCV CUDA, it's kernels, and then on top of it, there's a lot of decision making to run the correct kernel. In case of OpenVX, this is much lighter because of the data types and the uh, well clean definition of the API. And the second difference is. Um, on our side, our implementation, we spent a lot of time optimizing these kernels. So, of course, you can do and contribute some of them to uh, OpenCV CUDA, uh, but some of the features are not going to be like uh, easy to implement directly uh, in OpenCV. So. Is it fair to say that most of the optimization, most of the benefit you get, like for example, for optical flow comes directly from the knowledge of the way the OpenVX version of it was implemented, making more use of texture memory on the CUDA, better use of that, mm -hmm. which could be ported to OpenCV, but the benefit comes from that particular implementation of CUDA as opposed to OpenVX. Uh, you, could, you could say that. I would say for, uh, for optical flow, for, um, especially, uh, we, have went, we went back to the mathematical definition of the algorithm to implement a very clean implementation here. So basically, there is a performance optimization coming from algorithm itself, mm -hmm. as well as going deeply into the uh, CUDA architecture to get the best performance. Yeah, because between the simple CUDA programming and very advanced CUDA programming, you have a big difference in terms of performance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, uh, so it was something I was telling before uh, in another tutorial, but uh, in OpenVX, we have much less primitive than in OpenCV. So, and the optimization process is an incremental process. The more energy you spend, the more uh, gain you get. So, by defining uh, like uh, the minimum subset of primitives, uh, for implementers, it's much easier to get performance. Mm. Because uh, if you want to optimize OpenCV, you are, you are going to uh, want to spend your time optimizing much more primitives. And so, so you, you, you get also speed up this way mm -hmm. by, by spending more time optimizing. So you're saying optical flow, for example, stands out at 5x. Yeah. The algorithm is, is different here. Uh, it is defined. Still, we are using the exact definition of OpenVX. I mean, the API. Yeah. 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 The yeah. Underlying, underlying algorithm. Yeah. yeah, but OpenVX is not ne ne necessarily exactly uh, uh, the same as OpenCV. Mm. So we try to not to diverge too much, but sometimes we did some choices in the API uh, design. Mm -hmm so that uh, we target the, really the performance. So, so, so there are some variants uh, between OpenCV and OpenVX, even for, uh, I don't know for optical flow, but for, for uh, material uh, primitives. The, if you look at the slide like this, it's like the catch all you, you just use OpenVX and you get uh, two to three speed up uh, for your code, which I think it's not correct. Well, this is, uh, <laughs> this is what we Because you have reworked the algorithms, I mean, without reworking the, the algorithm, in fact, you wouldn't get this 
Yeah. Right. Fundamentally, so OpenCV is built to make it so you can code fast, and OpenVX is built to make it so your code runs fast. That's a fundamental Correct. difference in the sort of religion of the yeah. two. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, for example, OpenVX defines what is the data type. And then we take that uh, function definition and we've uh, optimized for that uh, definition. In OpenCV case, it's very generic. It's for mostly for prototyping, right? You have all these image size variants, data type variants, and if you were to optimize for all cases, it's unsurmountable. Okay, so I'll switch to the next slide. So the next one is graph mode. Uh, so again, the same sample. So what we have seen is basically we have, um, I don't have exact numbers, but we have tried with object tracking sample and we have seen significant performance gain. Maybe Thierry can quote exact numbers. Um, right, but I remember something like 70% uh, or at least 50%, yeah, yeah more. So. Basically, you can go f start with immediate, go to uh, graph mode, and it will bring you additional uh, optimizations because you have better control of memory, asynchronous execution, uh, and in our case, uh, texture and efficient use of streaming and CUDA textures brought additional uh, performance gain. And in addition to OpenVX, we have a Basically, we also give access to direct CUDA kernels. These are the same OpenVX API, but now you, you can basically directly call the CUDA kernels themselves. In this case, of course, you have to worry about uh, data allocations, how the data is transferred between CUDA, uh, CPU, and GPU, and how you're going to schedule and pipeline. It's uh, much more challenging if you are advanced CUDA developer, then you can achieve almost similar performance to graph mode, uh, uh, if you know, like if you are very familiar with CUDA. So in summary, uh, the way to choose uh, your APIs is, if you, ha if you have an existing library you already have implemented in OpenCV, you can immediately start with immediate mode, and you can quickly port and and assigned to CPU, assigned to GPU, and your pipeline can be accelerated. Uh, of course, in that case, you have to worry about where the data is located. Um, uh, we help there, like how the data is transferred. Uh, the second one is, the next one is graph mode. Now this is more advanced. You have to know ahead of time exactly what your algorithm pipeline looks like. You create nodes for each of the basic building blocks, and then you let the graph manager to hide overheads and optimize and manage the data. And, um, and finally, you have CUDA API, direct CUDA API, the same OpenVX defined uh, kernels, uh, but uh, it's low level access, so you can choose that way if you know, uh, if you are very, very familiar with CUDA. So in conclusion, VisionWorks is a uh, first Kronos OpenVX compliant 1.0 compliant library. It's also a first OpenVX 1.0.1 compliant library. Uh, we, have, uh, we have significant amount of optimization done. Uh, I have presented some of the optimization uh, values. And you can visualize your uh, graphs. And then there's significant amount of tutorials in the documentation. You can go into VisionWorks Toolkit reference, you can learn about how to do user node uh, design, uh, how to do interoperability with CUDA, OpenCV, uh, EGL streams, and so on. So there is significant amount of material uh, that will get you started with OpenVX together with all the other components you are already familiar with. And what we have seen so far is 45K downloads uh, since its release, uh, a public release in November 2015. In addition, it also goes on to automotive platforms uh, that uh, NVIDIA uh, delivers by default. So here's some useful links. So you can uh, check uh, at Kronos OpenVX page or developerimedia.com embedded vision works. You can download for Windows, desktop, or embedded platforms. Questions? Is um, vision work similar to CUDNN for uh, deep, deep learning that is very popular? 
is the concept similar? Like vision works is for vision, CVNN is for okay. deep learning. And do you see a future of vision works in deep learning or mm -hmm. totally separate? Yeah. So uh, the question is, uh, if VisionWorks is like a QDNN library, and if there is a way that they are going to work t together, or they are going to live in their separate worlds. So in internally, and in our some applications and demos, we are using them together, actually. So they are separate libraries. They are complementary. Uh, and we also, like ba basically, you can use computer vision together with Cafe as well. So. There's basically all kind of possibilities are there, but they will continue to evolve as separate libraries.